Hi, hello everyone. Um, so uh, today we will be talking about uh, analyzing Android rootkits uh, using user land and kernel land techniques. Um, uh, myself, Dinesh, I'm a security researcher at Google. Um, I worked in Microsoft prior to joining Google and Symantec and Excel. Uh, I'm a wannabe mathematician who tries to apply mathematics um, in reverse engineering tasks. And I am also in a um, long pursuit of building malware knowledge graph, where representing all the malware I have analyzed so far in a knowledge graph that can help um, create actionable uh, threat intelligence and explainable machine learning. I have uh, my talented uh, colleague Aditi with me. Uh, Aditi. Hey, hi. So I'm Aditi. I'm a security engineer at Atlassian. Uh, I'm a hobbyist hacker, security researcher, and techno-sociologist. I am spreading cyber awareness through my initiative, Infinite Hacks, uh, which is there on aditi.fyi. So really excited for this presentation, and let's get started. Sure. Thank you, Aditi. So um, before uh, we uh, take a deep dive into the actual content, uh, we would like to set the context of this session. So in this session, we will be talking about um, Android rootkit techniques and um, how to analyze them uh, predominantly and how can it be improved uh, to repurpose them as an instrumentation framework uh, so that you will be able to use it in the automated behavior extraction frameworks that you may have, like a, a wonderful addition to existing uh, sandbox environments. Uh, so the scope, um, Sometimes it is easy to, um, when we refer to rootkits, um, it is easy to think it of as a jailbreak um, equivalent of Android, right? Uh, so in this case, we are not going to talk about a jailbreaking or rooting the device. Instead, we will be talking rootkits in the traditional malware sense, where we will be talking about different ways to hide uh, certain artifacts, um, which otherwise is not possible. So we will be covering user land and kernel land techniques. Um, at, the same, at the same time, we will be also covering how to analyze the rootkits from user land and kernel land techniques. So Aditi will take over uh, covering user land techniques um, using dynamic binary instrumentation frameworks and uh, a tool that she has written on top of uh, Frida as well. And then I will take it over again and cover from uh, memory four and six perspective using volatility, um, Frida and um, uh, Knowledge Graph. So I will hand it over to Aditi now. Yeah, so uh, as Dinesh mentioned, we'll be talking about rootkits uh, from a user land and kernel land perspective. Now in user land, I'll be covering LD preload. We'll be seeing a rootkit which is using LD preload. And then we'll be covering the analysis techniques from user land. And in kernel land, we'll be covering ptraces, call hook, and other things that Dinesh would cover. So uh, let's get into user land rootkit and analysis. Now, LD preload, as you must be familiar with, is an age-old trick. It exploits functionality provided by the dynamic linker that allows you to tell the linker to bind symbols provided by a certain shared library before other libraries. So it has been a hook which is there, which has been there, and we'll be exploiting this one to create a rootkit which will be trying to hide its presence from Android system. So let's see how that works. Now you'll see here that I have an app. Uh, it is a toy rootkit app, which I have called Android System Update. Now, as any typical app in Android, when you open system in apps and notifications, you'll be seeing this app, the icon and the name of the app, right? Similarly, when you open all the list, this app again appears. And that is the way to let user know that this is installed. Now, I'll be creating a libhook.so, which is essentially a C code uh, compiled and pushed into Android. And then we'll be setting it up as the LD preload hook for the app settings. So you'll see that we need uh, the permissive mode of Linux for that. That is what I'm doing in the command shell in the terminal here. And I'll set the property wrap.com.android.settings, LD preload, to point to this SO which I have pushed into the device. So now, once I have pushed the SO, Let's try to open settings again and see what happens. Now you'll see that when we click on apps and notifications, the app has gone. You won't be able to see the icon or the name of the app anywhere. And this is a typical uh, way in which a rootkit can try to hide its presence by using the LDP load hook. So now having looked at this demo, 
let's move towards our analysis approach. Now, how do we analyze such a scenario, such as user land infection? How do we go about studying it? Now, what we have done is basically split the analysis approach into four steps, which are pretty intuitive. What we want to do is find out the state of the system before the infection. Now, when I say state of the system, what I want to do is enumerate all the processes which are running and all the modules which are lo loaded within those processes. So once I have captured that base state, I do the infection on the device. And we capture the state again after the infection. So capture the state after the rootkit has infected, again, enumerate all the processes and all the modules, and then we compare and analyze the two states. Uh, I'll be talking about third point more in the coming slide. And then in the fourth point, we identify the memory segments of interest and dump it to reverse engineer and analyze. So these are the four steps approach that we'll be taking uh, in our analysis of user land rootkit. So what we will be able to detect using these is that if any new process has appeared or not, because we have captured the state before and after the infection, we'll be able to know if there's any new process which has appeared or deleted, any new module which has loaded in any of the processes. And we can also see whether the module has been loaded from the same path as before, or has the path changed? What about the size of the module? Is it the same? So those are the kind of things that we we'll do in the analysis. And we'll also see the change in protection levels and all sorts of things which come up when a module gets dynamically loaded in any of the processes. So we'll do that and we'll analyst uh, also all the popular shared libraries. So in Android, all the processes are forked out of Zygot, right? And all of them have a set of libraries which are common, which are system libraries that the app is trying to use. So the idea is enlist all the popular shared libraries across all the processes and find out whether they have been patched or not due to the infection. So, and we won't be doing all of this manually, right? Otherwise, what's the fun of it? And it'll take a lot of time. So we have created a tool for this, which is called Smart Alec, which brings all these four steps together and conducts the analysis for you. So in this tool, which is based on top of FRIDA, we'll be using typical FRIDA functionalities to capture the enumerate ranges synchronously. So basically finding out what has been loaded in a, as a part of the process, what are the different modules which are loaded, and essentially using the memory uh, function which FRIDA provides to read the byte array. So basically we are trying to fetch that .so file that we have infected from within the memory and dump it so that you can take it and reverse engineer them. So let's see how Smart Alex functions. Now here in this demo, what we'll be doing is capture the state, do the infection, capture the state after the infection, do the analysis, and then dump the SO of interest for reverse engineering. So let's see what happens. Now note that we do need FRIDA. So in the initial steps of the demo, we'll be setting up FRIDA on Android. So I'll push FRIDA server. Uh, in Android, FRIDA works in a client server architecture. So we need the server to be pushed in the emulator and then the client, which is a, our system from which we are connecting. So here I'm just pushing um, FRIDA server uh, of x86-64, which is my emulator's architecture, into the device, into the emulator. And once I've done that, I'll run the server and I'll test whether the connection has been established between the system and the client. This is done by running FRIDA PSU command. So when I run FRIDA PSU, it will enlist all the processes which are there running on the system, uh, on the Android, I'm sorry. So it'll, it'll enlist all the processes and you would know that, okay, cool, uh, the connection has been established. So that is the first part of the demo, setting up FRIDA. Now, this is the sample rootkit uh, file, uh, which we'll be using to create, to simulate a rootkit infection. What it is trying to do is basically setting the Linux in permissive mode. And after that, setting properties for three different apps, settings app, calendar, and email. So we are pointing all of them to load the libhook.so that we just saw in the previous demo. So all of them will be uh, loading this. We, we have not yet infected, but this is the file we'll be using for infection. So now let's do the first step of our approach, which was capture the state of the device. For that, we'll be using a smart alert. So let's just push this uh, file also in the system so that we can run it when we want to do the analysis. Just before the post rootkit analysis, we would be running this file. So I'm just pushing it into the device right now. 
So once this is done, let's move to Smart Alec. So Smart Alec is a Python script, which is using Frida internally. And it, it gives a set of functionality that we can use, which, are, which, which is essentially the same set of steps that we just saw in the slides before. So also we need to use 3.7 Python version to run this because of the compatibility with Frida. Now you'll see that we have different set of um, arguments here, which is capturing the state, compare to state, dump the process, and so on. So now I'll be using the capture argument of the tool to capture all, I mean, all the processes which are running in this emulator right now. And I'll put all of the results in free rootkit, which is a folder. So let's see what happens. You'll see that it starts enumerating all the modules in different processes. And a folder is created, which is free rootkit. And you can see that in the processes, it will enlist all the processes which are running along with the PIDs and what, are, what is the process which is running. And in modules, you can see as per, uh, for every process, we'll have all the modules which have been loaded. So if you go and open one of them, you'll see that we have things like the base address, uh, the size um, and the protection levels of the files. So for this, we are just doing the Rx protection level of files, but you can configure it to load all the different kind of uh, modules. So this will run and will enumerate all the processes. Uh, you can see audio server, um, hold, the RM server. These are all the different processes which keep running on your Android device whenever it's functional. So uh, once we have done that, let's move to the inspection part of it. So now what we, we will try to do is inspect. So run basically the shell file that we just saw rooting for you. Um, we'll go to the location where that file is pushed and we'll run the file. So now all our LDP load hooks have been set. Now, since it is LDP load, we would need to run the processes again so that it gets loaded into the memory. So that is something which is expected to happen when the infection will uh, execute on, on the emulator or on the user end. So you, we'll open up settings, we'll open up calendar, we'll open up email, which are the three apps that we set up the hook for. And once we have done all this, we believe that the infection has been done properly on the device. And now we'll go and capture the state of the device now, which is the post rootkit part, right? So let's go back to Smart Alec and run capture all for post rootkit. So we'll do the same thing again, uh, enumerate all the processes which are open up now and all the modules which have been loaded in this process. So you can see that again, the same kind of files are created and all of them will be having the same kind of fields that we just saw, which is essentially all the different modules and their base addresses, their size, protection levels, and uh, file path, the path from where th uh, they are loaded and so on. So you can see that if any process got created because of the infection, we'll be able to see it here. And if any module got changed, it should be somewhere in the files. Right, because we are capturing and we are enumerating all the modules which have been loaded. So once this is done, let's move to the step three of our analysis approach, which is essentially comparing. So you will see that we have pre-rootkit and we have post-rootkit, the two folders where we captured the states before and after the inspection. So now let's go ahead and compare these two. We will do this using a smart alec compare argument. So we give the pre uh, rootkit folder and post rootkit in that order before and after. And we'll ask for a compare comparison analysis. And the tool will generate a report for you. You can see um, on the left side, the report has appeared. And what this does is basically tell you if any process has been killed or spawned during this uh, state change. And if any module in any of those, those processes has appeared or deleted or modified. So we'll do this that for all of the processes. You will see most of the processes are showing no change because they are not affected. But look at this one. Now here we are warning that it has been loaded from data partition. And if we look at it, it's the com.android.email, one of the 
apps we infected. So the modules appeared as one, nothing has been deleted or modified, but we saw a new module appearing, which has been loaded from the data partition. Now this is of interest because in Android, you don't see things being loaded from data partition, right? So it, this is loaded from data partition and that is what we are uh, highlighting in the report that, hey, there are these three modules which are loaded. Now, what do we want to do? We see that, okay, there are modules which are loaded and now I want to study that. I want to see what is the exact module so that I can reverse engineer it. And that is where the final step of the analysis comes, which is essentially dumping, dumping the SO of interest. So we use the smart aleck again, and this time we'll use the argument B. I'll ask for the process from which you want to dump the module for, and we point it out to be one of the infected processes, which is com.android.settings here. We point out the module, which is the name of the binary which we saw uh, got loaded, which is libhook.so, and then we ask to output it. And you'll see that on the left side, we saw com.android.settings libhook.so being dumped. And now let's go and read this file. Let's see what is in this. So we'll go to the Android toolkit. So this is the set of toolkit which, is, which comes along with um, the Android SDK. And you can use this to perform the, a lot of different interesting things. Uh, we'll be using it to just reading this file. So we'll use x 64 Linux Android read elf. Um, so let's just go to that directory and run that file. Run a read elf on the thing that we just loaded, which is libhook.so. So when we run this, this is like the typical Linux command. Uh, and we, when we run this on the .so that we dumped from the memory, you will see things which you kind of would be expecting. So it will give you the typical header, the information about the elf, and then so this is ideally uh, tells you that the state of the uh, file, what kind of file it is, and then you can take this file and put it in binary ninja or cutter or whatever is your favorite tool of interest and then reverse engineer it and know more about what is this SO trying to do and what kind of corruption is it causing on the emulator. So that is about smart elec and that is the demo that we just saw. So Essentially, it will tell you any change which has been made. Now, there is an argument that what if there is no typical new .so file which is loaded, but something is patched. So Smart Alec will identify the popular shared module. So the idea is that dump the SO files before and after and then compare, right? Because there would be change in size. And once you have dumped the things, you can easily compare. Uh, so that is the idea. And make it even more smarter. So we have open source this project and it's present on um, the GitHub repo. The link is there. You can go ahead, tweak the code and use it for your own benefit. So uh, that's all. And let's move to the other part of the presentation now, which is the kernel land analysis. So over to you, Tanesh. So uh, now that we have discussed how to analyze um, some of the rootkits uh, from the user land, it's time to uh, switch to the kernel land, uh, like how to perform um, rootkit analysis uh, from user uh, from from kernel land, uh, which can handle um, user land rootkits as well as kernel land rootkits. Um, so, um, as I have uh, outlined in the intro slides, uh, we will be uh, approaching this task from memory four and six perspective. So one of the common tasks or some of the common tasks that is that are associated with memory four and six is uh, acquire, prepare, and analyze. Uh, so where in the acquisition phase, uh, we have to find a sound uh, way to uh, perform live memory acquisition. That is uh, dumping the content of uh, the RAM of the device, uh, which we are going to perform the analysis on. Um, so this process uh, has been a very mature process so far because memory four and six itself has been a mature uh, field. And uh, we use some of the predominant open source uh, software uh, such as Lime and Volatility as the main uh, tools to perform this analysis. Uh, so there are a few unique steps when it comes to Android memory acquisition uh, because of the 
platform specific uh, constraints that is associated with Android um, when it comes to performing memory forensics. So we need to rebuild the kernel with LKM support, that is loadable kernel module support, so that the Lime module can be loaded in the device. And uh, we also need to cross compile the Lime kernel with the uh, kernel source code of the Android of the target device. And we need to disable AC Linux, and then we need to load the Lime and then stream the RAM content over the socket, which can be consumed in our host system. So once the memory is acquired, it is time to prepare the profile for that particular memory dump so that the volatility framework can understand parsing it and apply various plugins on it. So in order to do that, there is a very well documented process in the uh, GitHub page of uh, the Android volatility. Uh, the, the only uh, detail is like uh, you may need to uh, get the some of the artifacts which are generated from the step one as part of compilation of your kernel. So once you do that, you will have a profile which can be used by the volatility. So now you have a, um, a acquired you have a acquired memory. You have uh, created a profile. It is time to combine both with volatility and use some of the existing Linux plugin, uh, which is which comes by default with volatility. Uh, some of the plugins are Linux PS list, proc maps, dump map, PSNV, PSX view. And then um, what we are uh, proposing and introducing in this uh, talk is um, application of knowledge graph and uh, ML plugins to the existing volatility plugins. So we basically build on top of the existing plugins and add certain features which persist the context uh, throughout the analysis. We will talk more about it in the subsequent slides. And uh, th these are the things that we will be covering uh, from uh, by in the, in the subsequent slides. So we will cover both, as I said, um, user land rootkit analysis as well as kernel land rootkit analysis. So like Aditi has explained, we will see how to use the plugins to uncover LD preload hooks and the ptrace based rootkits and rootkits that work by hooking the system call and some of the powerful rootkits that works by directly manipulating the kernel data structures, which is a task underscore struct structure of the uh, Linux system um, so that it hides processes um, like, Lin uh, like Aditi explained. So we are going to do the uh, same process hiding technique and uh, app hiding um, uh, feature with five different techniques, LD preload, ptrace, Cisco hook, and DCOM. And then we will uh, uncover it using the uh, memory forensics. So let's uh, talk about preload. Aditi has covered uh, the internal working of preload. Uh, so in the benefit of time, I will directly go to the um, analysis part. So in case of uh, an analyzing LD preload rootkits from the memory forensics perspective, we are going to leverage an existing plugin uh, that comes by default with volatility framework, which is Linux underscore PSENB. So this particular plugin uh, enumerates all the running processes at the time of acquisition of the memory. And then it would inspect the environment variables in the process context. And wherever the LD preload variable is set, it would um, flag that as for further analysis. And then we have written some automation on top of it as a workbench uh, graphical user interface, which can automatically dump that particular module and then load it in a disassembler and uh, show the code where the hook has been established. Uh, in addition to that, as I have said, uh, we are also persisting the context because when a particular plugin runs, it is generally the life cycle of the plugin is starting from that analysis and the end of the analysis of that particular plugin. What we are trying to do across the uh, execution of different plugins is that uh, we gather the intelligence, we gather all the data points, and then store them in a knowledge graph uh, as and when the plugin executes. So while a plugin is running in the front end, in the back end, we populate a graph of all the memory artifacts, all the memory objects in the form of entity relationships, um, so that it becomes quite natural for an analyst and uh, analyst can become intuitive uh, when it comes to analyzing a, a particular uh, uh, particular rootkit that she is trying to analyze. Uh, so in this case, as you could see, 
um uh, the ld preload um so file this is the ld preload so file we will see a uh, elaborate demo in the subsequent slides so as you could see there are three nodes these three nodes are process ids and there is this particular uh, preload so file which has relationship with all these three five all these three nodes so it is all about asking the right questions when it comes to performing re or rce right uh, so the answers are everywhere it is all about asking right questions so knowledge graph is a uh, is a fundamental method which can navigate an analyst to ask the right questions and narrow down the energy so uh, similarly in ptrace uh, ptrace is again a user land rootkit uh, so how does it work it's very well documented uh, it uses a linux ptrace call to attach to a, a process that it tries to infect and then uh, use ptrace poke to uh, overwrite some of the uh modules that it wants to uh, infect and then it creates a memory infection so uh in when it comes to ptrace it is a little bit trickier uh, to uh, to 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 flag uh, or to identify the infection so that is where we are introducing a very simple uh, plugin it is nothing fancy we will see the fancier plugins later uh, so in this case what we are doing is we are enumerating all the task struct structure and if the task structure uh, is we are enumerating through the all the task structure and then if the uh, if if the particular flag is set when it comes to uh, linux ptrace so when a process tries to put a ptrace on it so we will have uh, this particular field ptrace set to 1 so if the ptrace value is set to 1 uh, we are simply uh, adding the particular process as a infected process and then the parent of the process is the actual infector because fundamentally when a particular process is uh, opening a ptrace call to the other process it becomes the parent of the uh, process at that moment right so uh, we are using that logic and creating a table so as you could see here um, uh, this particular application tracer has uh, put a hook on these three applications which are running so um, the very interesting point is most of the practical uh, rootkits they don't use ptrace live they just they quickly attach to it and then inject a so file and then they detach it so this particular technique will not be useful when it comes to the actual rootkits so that is where there is an another plugin which we have written linux ptrace all uh, which basically leverages kernel tainting so whenever somebody tries a ptrace uh, call we are uh, emitting a taint message from the kernel we are capturing it in the um, uh, in the, in the in the d message daemon and then we are displaying all the historic information of ptrace calls over a period of time so similarly syscall table hook it is all about uh, getting the system table start address and then modifying a entry to point to uh, a function which is present in a kernel object so this is where the kernel mode rootkit comes into the picture where rootkits are not only written as an application but they are written as a loadable kernel modules themselves so they basically modify the syscall table and uh, it puts a hook on open uh, system call and every time a particular application uh, file is being uh, opened instead of uh, passing the original uh, file it will pass a different file so that it gets hidden um, so we will see a very quick demo of uh, syscall hook and then we will see what plugin we use in volatility Uh, so we use this uh, linux underscore check underscore syscall plugin, uh, which basically enumerates uh, the system call table and finds the hook. And uh, now we will see all the demos uh, one by one. <clears throat> so in the interest of time, uh, I will be speeding up the. Uh, yeah so so you could see now uh, this particular node data local temp preload.so so when you um, plot it in the graph so you will be able to expand each and every node to see the relationship among uh, all these nodes uh, which can uh, which can intuitively help an analyst uh, to point to a direction uh, how the infection has happened who was responsible for the infection what were the pre infection scenarios and what are the post infection uh, effects so now we will see how this particular thing was populated uh, so we are uh, just automated the infection process as well as the analysis process so in the infection process now you can see uh, 
all the activities that we have mentioned. So it automatically tries to clear the mem dump, any previous mem dump. It inserts the payload. It sets the LD preload hook, which Aditi has done in her script. And um, once the port forwarding is set, it streams the content of the RAM and we consume it over a network socket and persist in the local disk. So at this, as you could see at this stage, the Chrome application has been hidden, uh, which you can see previously, which was there in the listing. So um, now we will uh, run the Linux underscore PSList command. And then we will also see how that particular uh, graph is populated. So now we have noted that Android settings PID 7028. And we are running that particular 7028 node with the new plugin Linux underscore proc underscore uh, maps kg, as you can see here. So now as this particular plugin runs, you will be able to see that the database is uh, at this stage has uh, no values, it is empty. So you could see there are no nodes or edges right now. There are no labels in the database. So now when this particular volatility plugin is running, uh, it will do its normal uh, functionality as is. At the same time, we also uh, import a Py2 Neo uh, library, uh, which is basically a, a Python library that can communicate with a Neo4j graph database. And we persist all the information in the form of uh, graph with the nodes and edges. As you could see now, we have emitted a simple message loaded Neo, and now you could go back to your graph database and see the uh, edges um, and labels populated now. So currently 625 nodes are populated. So from this point onwards, uh, you will be able to query all the PIDs which were running at the time of acquisition. You can pick one particular PID or you can pick one particular file and you can uh, continue your analysis uh, in the most intuitive way. And uh, this is only for the demonstration purpose, right? In a real-time environment, all these things will happen as a command line utility. So you, uh, visualization is great for analysis, but for automation, uh, the, the framework also supports automatically performing all these tasks instead of we double-clicking each and every node. It will be able to do the community detection and all the graph data science libraries to automatically infer intelligence. So that's the uh, advantage of uh, knowledge graph and uh, representing and combining ML and knowledge graph in a memory 416 framework. And uh, as I have said, some of the unique steps which is involved in the memory 416, uh, preparing your kernel and then combining it uh, to, to, with all the uh, pre-config parameters and all. So we are introducing uh, um, a memory 416 uh, workbench for, especially for mobile security. And um, you could see most of the tasks can be automated here. So you can build uh, the kernel that you want. So in this case, I'm uh, choosing x86-64 architecture with LKM support, with KProp support, and I don't want verified boot. So once you submit it, uh, it will pull the Goldfish kernel in this case, because it is Goldfish kernel for other devices, it will be the respective kernel branch. And then it will do the pre-configuration and it will build a kernel for you, which can be flashed and uh, into the device and uh, used for live memory 416. So now you could see that this boot image is ready. Uh, you can run the, um, run, run, the, run the emulator with this uh, newly created kernel image. And once that is done, uh, you can use all the functionalities like preloading, ptrace, syscall, decom, unload a module, load a module, uh, proc kg, and uh, you can also submit to virus total, uh, convert knowledge graph, infer knowledge graph. So everything is automated in this process so far, whatever we have discussed. Uh, so in the benefit of time, uh, I'm moving ahead a little bit faster. So. So at this stage, you can see that we are clicking on the app info and uh, we the, the process, the Chrome, which we want to uh, make to disappear has disappeared. And uh, we are going to perform the same functionality with Ptrace now. 
So this is LD preload. And now I click on the P trace button. So now what would happen is uh, it will perform all the cleanup and then perform the uh, P trace rootkit injection into the emulator. So this is essentially a Frida script because Frida works based on Ptrace. So now I'm clearing the cache of the target app so that any previous effects are erased. So I run so many other applications as well in order to demonstrate that this app is not only putting a hook on one process, in fact, more than one process. So now you should be able to see that um, the process is hidden, the app is hidden again. And uh, each and every time, um, it will generate a lime uh, file. The lime file is basically the content of the RAM, which is 2 GB in this case, because this emulator has 2 GB of RAM. So when it comes to syscall hook, it basically hides a particular PID uh, by manipulating the um, uh, system call table, open system call. So again, you will be able to see that um, the app in question is hidden and you have a, a lime dump as well at the end of the stage. So similarly, for uh, DCOM, you will be able to see that once the rootkit module is uh, loaded using the ls uh, insmod uh, command, the PID of the android.com.android.settings is, um, is hidden from any uh, process enumeration commands. So now you can see that uh, we are pushing the DCOM payload, which is essentially an LKM module. Uh, which manipulates the uh, kernel data structures to delink a process uh, that a task stru uh, st data structure from the double link list. So once that is done, you can see that now before the rootkit takes effect 6752, which is the process ID of com.android.settings. But once the uh, rootkit is loaded, that uh, PID is hidden forever. So now at this stage, um, uh, we, we have uh, created all the infections and dumped the memory. So now you click on the analyze button. Uh, so it will load the uh, Lime uh, file, which is the memory dump of the RAM, and it will perform the heuristics and then it identifies the, this particular process as the memory infection. And uh, it loads uh, that particular uh, module, uh, which has been injected into the memory space in a, a favorite disassembler. Um, and then you, it can navigate you to the um, code block, which is responsible for uh, the particular infection. So which happens to be this, uh, right? So um, essentially um, in the interest of time, we have not covered all the functionalities of this particular, as you could see, uh, this particular uh, workbench has uh, 32 functionalities. Um, some of them are uh, very mundane tasks, some of them are uh, complex tasks, but the overall goal is to make it as a complete end-to-end -end analysis framework, uh, which combines the power of volatility with, um, the, the, with the power of knowledge graph and other ML plugins, um, so that we have uh, a framework which can be used to gain actionable threat intel and explainable machine learning. So. This is the key takeaway of this particular talk where uh, you can use uh, some of the concepts we discussed in this presentation uh, as an instrumentation uh, framework to empower your existing uh, analysis uh, framework to create automatic extraction of information, not only for rootkits, but also for any other malware. So we hope this is useful. We are open for any questions, uh, even online or offline of this presentation. Thank you very much.